You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could be with me because I've got a great show tonight. I have a very dynamic guest, Mr. Michael LeBlanc, and he is an author, inspirational speaker, life coach, and even an energy practitioner. He's got a new book out called Manifest a Better Life with God, and it's all about consciousness. It's so down to earth, so much that you can understand the secrets that will boomerang you into a life of manifesting. It's so wonderful, and I know you're going to love it. He is um, at, and I want to give you his website first so you can go and check him out, createwithconsciousness.com. I just think this guy is fabulous, and I think you're really going to love this interview. And with that, let's take a fast commercial break, and we'll be right back with Mr. Michael LeBon. It's here, it's hot, and it's a must-read. It's the science behind The Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Well, welcome, Michael LeBlanc. For coming on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I am so excited, so excited to talk to you because you've got some great insight into how to manifest a better life with God. And, and just before we start, I want to say that there's a connotation with the word God. And it has a whole bunch of meanings. So I'm hoping that we can even discuss that. But Michael, thank you for being on the show today. No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, actually, I'm looking forward to it. I, I enjoy talking about manifesting. And I, I'm i more than happy to explain uh, what I mean by God and why I kept it in the title of the book. And because it, it was a debate. Do I put the word God in the title of the book or not? So. Well, you know, that's really trying to get the information out there. And so many people can identify with it, but some people have negative connotations about it too. So it's just, I would guess how they can identify this energy, right? Right. So the, the book is, uh, so Manifest a Better Life with God is the title, but it's, it's really a story um, about God as consciousness, and really how everything is is an expression of God consciousness, and law of attraction is really just woven into our being. It's woven into consciousness. Um, it's just sort of a, in the fabric of it. It's not a separateness, if you will. Right. And, you know, my own journey was a. I grew up with. I grew up Catholic, so God was this external God, and you know, went to church just kind of weekly, that sort of traditional piece. Um, fortunately for me, I didn't have a big, heavy religious background. So I feel like it, it, it made it a little bit easier for me to I expand or have a few less hangups about what God meant or, what, or, or a lot of hurts, if you will. Um, but over time, that whole idea of God out there kind of moved to God within, but there was still this sort of separate notion and eventually, I remember this uh, God and I kind of having this prayer, this dialogue, and 
and I was really pissed off. And, <laughs> and, and I, I remember this kind of like, you're, you're fired. It's like, you're just, you're not enough. I can't, <laughs> I, I was like, if this is all you got, then, then I, I, you know, I, I need something more. It's like, I can't handle the, the moodiness, the sometimes you answer prayer, the sometimes you won't, all this kind of stuff. And, and it really, more is what happened. Um, and so probably I was finishing up grad school. So this was like in the late eighties and ended up in this little town in Victoria, Texas, a small little group was using the course in miracles as a study group. And then I, you know, that became Ernest Holmes and science of mind and, and other teachings and a guy named Jack Bolin, who is a unity minister. And I would listen to his cassette tapes. If you remember cassette tapes, oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> His his teachings were actually my first time I manifested my first like new vehicle after grad school, um, but it, it's been this evolution of a of a God out there to really my what what I talk about in my book is God is consciousness and what I just didn't it was a very deliberate decision to not just throw away the word God um, I, I didn't feel the need to. I reference it in the book that I know people who use the universe source, um, source energy or yeah, divine, you know, and, and all that to me means the same thing. It's, it's a consciousness. Um, and that everything I, I, the way I talk about it in the story is everything is God consciousness and we're just expressions of it. But there is one thing about the word God, you know, we grow up and our parents are our gods up to a certain age. So that our parents actually serve as a memory for what we believe that a God is. If they, our parents were loving or a disaster, that's what we're going to bring with us in this journey of life. Wouldn't you agree? Right. And I, and I think as we kind of go on our own journey, because at some point you go on your own journey about what it is and what it means. And that's like that conversation I had where God was fired. It was like I was ready for a new level of consciousness. I was ready for a deeper understanding. And I wasn't finding it in my like weekly church kind of experiences. I, I, I wanted more. I really believed there was more. Um, and that's what happened with like, you know, learning about Course in Miracles and and then all those other teachings around Ernest Holm and Neville Goddard and then Jerry and Esther Hicks and just this, you know, um, there's kind of a whole slew in the last 30 oh, yeah. years of people that have been really teachers for me. Um, and, and it's more metaphysical. It's not the straight yeah. Bible scriptures. It's right. more, it's more expansive. So we are learning that, it's a much bigger picture than we ever conceived. Wouldn't you agree? I, I do. And I talk about that in, in the book deliberately, that, that, that journey was definitely a, and, and I, and I still feel like there's more to come. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I've been at it for a while, but I I'm well aware there's more to understand. There's a deeper level. There's more, there's more levels of consciousness to comprehend and, 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 and move into, um, but it, it's, and so it is, it's this journey, right? It's this journey. So it is, and, and it's wonderful and it's frustrating and it's, uh, <laughs> but how do we get to have a better life with the understanding of our God? How do we do that? And I know that's chapter one of your book, but let's start bringing that in so that people can understand it is an individual approach. I think it is. I mean, it definitely, I, I think we, you know, we grow up in certain situations and we grow up with certain environments and certain understandings and all that's fine. It's a starting place, right? You, right. Start, you just start somewhere. Mine happened to be Catholic and that was kind of the orientation. Um, yeah. I've been to 30 different countries. So I've had exposure to wow. lots of different, you know, religions, if you will, and, and, and backgrounds and, um, and all of everybody has their starting place. But I do think it is an, it is a very personal experience and it is an inner journey. Um, and, and I, over time, I've just 
become where I, I have to have those daily practices. I have to have those daily practices of going within. Um, I have to get, you, to me, you, you got to make friends with silence. <laughs> and some people can do that easier than others. Um, yeah, I it, noticed that in your book, you talked about you went on the silent retreats. I have. Well, wow, that is something. 10 days has been the most I've, I've wow. experienced a few times. Um, but the, the depth and the, it's like the energy I leave with just lasts for months. It's, it's, really? I, I remember the first time I went on a 10 day, I thought, you know, initially it's like, what the hell are you getting yourself into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, 10 whole days. It's like, um, but I, it, it was wonderful. And I remember the, just this feeling of groundedness and, uh, to, it was just a sense of well-being that was just in me, and it lasted like for months. I, I still to this day remember that experience. It, it's uh, so I do think it is a personal journey, but I do think you have to have some daily practice and discipline if you it, to, for it to evolve. For for it to, it's like there's a lot of. I think that's why a lot of my own growth has happened through books, you know, mm -hmm. through reading people who are dead or pe some of them are alive, you know, but they've all been teachers for me. Um, but it's this inner journey. It's this inner growth that happens, you know, so what God used to mean for me, it, it no longer means that at all. I just didn't ditch the word. I just, I still am okay with the term. And that's, that's very, good. that's me. That's me. I get it. That some people that, it's such a negative experience for them that the term just, you know, stimulates too much stuff. And so they don't use it. And that's fine. And I talk about that in the book to give a sense of, of what I mean. And mm -hmm. actually one of my reviews, I, I really appreciated on Amazon was initially she, the title was sort of like, eh, I'm not sure if I, I want to read this. And she said that quickly went away as she read the book, um, you know, which was great because, uh, and part of the prayer I open in the book is that I hope part of the book, part one of the book will help people heal those hurts. Like yeah. that they can move past that. Um, well, you talk about yourself being an energy practitioner. What exactly does that mean so that we can identify? Sure. So my background's in social work. So I, I, I have a license in social work. But I've always been intrigued more by alternative healings. Um, mm. And I got into Reiki many mm. years ago, and I've done level one, level two. I never went to get fully become a Reiki master, um, but I, I just sense energy well when I use the, the practice. Um, and in my life coaching, I kind of do both. We do kind of what I would call active coaching around how do you shift your consciousness? Because if you want a condition out there to shift, then you have to shift your consciousness because everything comes from consciousness. So, so shifting consciousness is the way to shift conditions. And there's an activeness to that, meaning your, your focus around your thoughts and stuff. But, but I do believe going within and the energy work and like I, I do a certain deliberateness around blessing and uh, balancing energy, your, your energy centers. Uh -huh. Um, and I find like clients I do both with make the better progress. It's I like see. you're, you're, you're shifting your consciousness and shifting your energy from two perspectives. You're not just coming from a, an analytical one with your mind. You're really going past that into, into the energy itself. And, um, and so, so Reiki is kind of my primary training, if you will. Um, Barbara Brennan, Hands of Light, sure. and a couple of other, her books were, were big, uh, I guess, textbooks for me. <laughs> right, right. So, yes. so that's important for us to kind of break three, free of the three D world. In other words, so that we can move into understanding what it is, our connection to God, and that really has to do with silence. And I could imagine that in your silent retreats, it was all about you breaking free of the clutter so that you could really go within. And, and I don't think people understand the importance of that because, and you're saying daily you need to do this, but 
I can see where 10 days of this would really force you to it, get rid of the cobwebs. It, it does. And it's, I, I went to one in particular was in Snowmass, Colorado, because a particular meditative practice I teach and, I, and talk about in the book is centering prayer. And Snowmass, Colorado, the, the, the monks that own this monastery, it's like, they own like 5,000 acres. So it is wow. beautiful. Wow. And as I'm driving there, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be fantastic, right? You're in this peaceful setting. So all my centering prayer time and all my, my sits, if you will, are going to be fantastic. And not the case at all. <laughs> really? The, 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 the out there beauty did not necessarily make all the crap. <laughs> Interesting. Know, it, it's like even with all that beauty around me, my mind was still there. And I still had to, to, to keep returning back to going within and detaching from it and detaching from it and getting to those, that, that deeper space or what I would call my true self or your divine self and uh, that more pure state of consciousness. So and you're kind of restructuring the way that you think. You, and you, that takes practice. It's even more than the way you think. It's restructuring how you focus because ah. your, your, your focus is really the key to everything meaning my focus can get caught up in thoughts, my focus can get caught up out there in conditions, or I can make my focus kind of come back to being with and being in consciousness and uh, being, yeah, so it's, it's not so much thoughts, it's almost like it's, it's training my focus to leave this manifested world and come back to this unmanifested world which is all the power is, which is where all the magic's going to happen anyway. Okay, uh, it all, so... It all starts there. All right, but I just... This is bringing up a whole bunch of questions because okay. now I want to know, when, when you go into a meditative state, your mind doesn't shut off, but it will keep on trying to bring you out so you can focus on something else. Is that not correct? How yeah. do you train the brain to stay focused into that reality? How do you do so, that? And Joe Dispenza talks about this in a kind yeah. of cool way. He talks about like a very narrow focus and coming back to a broader focus. Um, and what I like with centering prayer, you're using a sacred word. You just think of a simple word that's really about your intention to come back to the non-physical, to come back to being with divine consciousness, if you will, right? So being with God, being with God consciousness, whatever term you want. And it's, it's not a mantra. It's not a frequent repetition. It's, it's a deliberate word that's reminding you what you're doing. You're shifting your focus from, your focus is usually trained to be on the external and on very tangible things. That's just how we grew up. We didn't go to courses early on about, hey, how do you focus differently? <laughs> yeah. right? so, so we're just very wired that way now, just from even a neurological point of view. Um, but training your focus, how to leave that and come back to within, come back to, a, a, it's almost like a non-focus. It's a being with consciousness again mm. is, is what's happening. You're, the moment I'm focused on a thought, I've gotten specific with my focus. When I, when I come back to my sacred word, I'm, I'm bringing myself back to non-focusing. So I'm kind of like focusing on something specific and trying to come back to not focusing on something specific. And the sacred word in centering prayer is, is how to come back to being with God consciousness, with your true self, which is just that, that non-manifested state. Um, and in the, in the practice itself, the thing is, you're, when your mind kicks in and you start going off on a train of thought, which happens, even if you're in a beautiful setting like Snowmass, Colorado, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you reintroduce the word. Father Keating used to talk about it ever so softly, like laying a feather on cotton, right? So you're not screaming at yourself, well, get back to it. You know, you're just gently returning back to a, a broader, a non-focus from a tangible. And a lot of times feelings come up. And the same thing, though, is feelings. Let them come up, but keep returning back to just being and not getting caught up in the feelings either, right? So it's a, it's a constant practice. And so as you do it on a daily basis, though, you get better at it 
how to go there and how to do that. And, and like with anything, as you shift your consciousness and you shift your ability to focus, your neurology gets better. Your neurology mm-hmm. shifts around things. So. Yeah. so where do you add the desire component? I mean, when you're intentionally trying to manifest something, where does that play a part of it? I, I think that's... I think desire is just a natural occurrence from being uh, here. (laughs) Like, I I don't think the goal is to not desire. I I, I mean, I, 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 if, if it is, I'm failing miserably. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. too. I mean, I don't want to get wrapped up in it all the time, but I, I, it's just a natural occurrence. Like even with, uh, you know, this, my book, it's like, I, I'm building it. I'm, I'm reinventing my life again. It's like I, I had my practice in Austin. I was doing energy work and counseling, and I had a therapy practice. Um, I, I had a bad experience. I needed a break. I went into the corporate world, got into corporate consulting and training, and, and I wanted it at an international level, and I got to do that. But I really was missing this whole world of personal growth and what mm-hmm. I was doing before, but I didn't want to go back into it as a therapist. And so the book idea happened, and so I, I ended up self-publishing a book, and and now I'm trying to grow a business, though, as a, a coach and an energy worker and, and writing more. And, and I've never done that. And it's not a job you apply for. So, so there's this whole desire to, to succeed at that. And so I'm having to kind of apply all the stuff I teach in my book. Like, how do I, how do I invent this new, this new chapter in my life? How do I invent this new career in my life, right? And, and, you know, and then here we are talking. It's like, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it is, is lo- I, I mean, I got a thousand and qu- one questions for you here. So you have this desire to create this new foundation in which mm-hmm. to grow. So the, the question is then, what part do you turn over to God and what part do you manifest for yourself? That's the number one question. It is a great question. And, and the part I have to work at, so, you know, there's a, so the teaching around done unto you as you believe, right, has been around forever. Right? Yes. But the believe part is the part that kind of gets, you just hear the words and you move right along, right? <laughs> and, and it's like, there's a lot of things I think people want in their life, but they really don't believe it. They don't have, they don't embody the sense of it as theirs and it's done. And I think it's even believe is, is not right, the right word. It's like divine consciousness manifests from a place of knownness. It's a knowingness. It's not even like belief. It's like there's a belief line. Hope is right underneath it and knowing is right above it. Right. right? And, and right. then here's belief. And, and I feel like the work is to, to embody, to make yourself get to a point where you feel it done, you know it's done. You you're you're not in that wanting it phase. You're already into it. Neville Goddard used to talk about belief, thinking from the end, right? So so for me right now, it's just using me as an example. I'm having to spend time going within, and then getting into the feeling of me already succeeding in this world of being an author. My book's doing well. Uh, my coaching's going well. I'm speaking. I'm getting to talk about this stuff I love, um, and but I'm having to see it already happening and get into the feeling of it. My job is to get into the feeling of it, and not that's just the thinking of it. It there's a feeling nature I, that's so key to everything, and it's not just the thoughts. It's how are the thoughts making you feel, and it, and you gotta you gotta stay with the thoughts long enough to shift your feelings. Um, and so there, there's more, there's a depth, there's a nuance there. And so that's kind of my work. And now divine consciousness is connected to the bigger picture. So like, I would have never known how to talk to you. <laughs> but, but the divine consciousness, like, so Constance Arnold went on the, the cruise you were on, right? Yeah. Before that cruise, though, she happened to run across my book. And, and we chatted and I sent her a copy of my book and then I went on her, her radio talk show, right? And, and then she sent me an email and said, hey, Law of Attraction magazine, 
you can publish an article in there. And I'm like, Hey, great. And I was like, well, I would love to like talk to like, how do I get my book to, you know, like <laughs> yeah. one, thing, one thing leads to another. And then here we kind of are. And that's stuff that I didn't necessarily orchestrate, but shifting my consciousness allows my vibration, my frequency to shift. And now I'm at a different place where different things can come my way. And so and, you, you yes. manifested it by the feeling that it was going to happen. You didn't know the end result. You kind of stayed away from that, but you let the universe or God just flow the things to you. Yeah. Like there, the very, so it's probably been a year or so that I, I did, I, I found out about law of attraction magazine probably a year or two ago. Right. And I get your emails and I was like, you know, that'd be, I should really look at doing my book, like somehow getting my book over there. But that was just a passing thought. And I'm trying to like do other stuff and grow my business. And right. And then, but I keep focusing on the feeling of success. And then the details sort of keep happening and improving. And um, so I'm going to share one quick story that kind of brings sure. that even together. So there used to be this pretty ugly growth on my head where I'm pointing to it's, uh -huh. it's gone. Uh, but it was about the size of the tip of my finger and it was there for years and my hair keeps thinning as I grow older. So <laughs> I, 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 I keep trying to manifest that when I haven't figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> you will, you but, will. But the, the growth was gotten very visible, right? Cause my hair's thinner. And for years I was like, I'll be out. I'm going to, like God and I will go within, I'll use energy, I'll shift my consciousness, blah, 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 right? And for years, nothing. It, it wouldn't shift. It would, and actually, I think sometimes it just got worse. <laughs> and, and friends were like, hey, you really should go check that out. Go see a doctor, let them treat it, burn it off or whatever they do. The, you know. And I was like, no, I said, it does, I don't have any sense of it being life-threatening. I'm going to figure this out. There's something I, on my end I'm simply not doing yet, and that's why it's not shifting. And I reread people all the time. I restudy. I'm a self-taught kind of guy. And so I was rereading Neville Goddard and his whole thing about thinking from the end. And I was like, you know, I keep picturing myself healing my head, which means I keep in my consciousness a growth. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the growth must continue to be. I, I wasn't moving far enough along to a new place of consciousness where there was no growth. And the way I got there was really kind of simple and almost kind of stupid, but it worked. <laughs> I, I envisioned a conversation with my hairdresser because he sees it all the time. I was like, well, he, I can't hide it from him. He sees it all the time. And so I envisioned this conversation where he sees my head, he notices it's completely gone. And he's like, hey, what doctor did you go to? And I tell him happily and joyously, no, I, I didn't go to a doctor. I, I, I went within, shifted my consciousness. God and I, we, it's like healed. And, and I, I got to joyously share the story with him about how I healed it. But from the place of it was already gone and he was noticing how it was gone. That visual image, that interaction in my head allowed me to reach a feeling place I had never got to before and a place in consciousness I had never got to before where it didn't exist. So wow. here's, the fun, here's the fun part of the story. I stayed with that for about three weeks. And this thing that never would shift for years slowly started shrinking. And at first I'm like, are, am I just wow. like making this crap up? <laughs> you know, like, wow. but it started, it started shrinking. And the next thing you know, it, it's, it flaked off and it's been gone. And it's oh gone. my goodness. That is brilliant. But it was that nuance that, I just had never, I wasn't going far enough into the feeling of it didn't exist anymore. And I think with physical ailments and like, I've not had to recover from cancer and I know there are people who have, and I think that's why I love Joe Dispenza's work because he brings science and, yes. and, and spirituality together so well. And I'm actually excited about a seven day intensive. I'm about oh, to yeah. do it. Oh. Um, but it's that nuance that, that made the difference. Um, of getting to that place of feeling it already done. You're already in the, you're living in there. So whatever it is you're desiring, you have to go to the place of you already have it 
Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a different version of you. There's a version of you without it that wants it. And there's a, vi- there's a version of you, though, that exists right now, the moment you desire it, of you with it, living it, experiencing it. And that's the, the focus has to go there because when you focus there, you activate that consciousness, right? And as you activate that consciousness, then you start sending a different vibration out, a different signal out, and the, the cooperative components that, you know, Esther Hicks talks about start happening, right? Yeah. But I think you just explained it so well that people can finally grasp what they have been doing wrong. And for you to totally change that within about three weeks, that's a powerful experience. And and to not change it for years. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) To, To work at it for years and not change it was like disappointing. It was frustrating, right? But then within three weeks, it went away, but because of the nuance. I, I emotionally was still in consciousness staying where a growth existed. But I, it wasn't I, until you were talking to your barber. Yeah, that I, I pictured that conversation. See, that is, that is a powerful, powerful secret right and there. That's, and that's the thing with the visualization piece. I visualized that conversation. But the visualization was only the technique to get me to the feeling place of it gone. And that was the key. So there's all kind of techniques sometimes out there. And some of it's visualizing. Some of it might be affirmations or whatever. The The key, though, is, is it shifting you emotionally? And if it is, keep at it. Because the more consistent you get with shifting that, then you're really shifting your consciousness. You're shifting your vibration. You really are activating a new frequency. And so a new condition can happen. So how do you recognize that you are, in fact, changing? You're at that point where it is going to work. How do you recognize that what you're doing is not working and that you haven't gone far enough? It, it, I, it's paying a little bit more attention to how you feel. Okay. Because uh, what was happening a lot of times in the years of it not healing, there was a level of, if I really paid attention to how I feel, I wasn't often feeling the joy of it gone. I was, I, there was an efforting to make it go away. And that's different. <laughs> that, oh my that, God, that's that, brilliant. That's a very that's a working kind of feeling. That's an efforting kind of feeling. That's a, there's an awareness of it's still there um, or the absence of what I wanted was still there. And so it's really hone into how you feel more than you probably are. And you'll notice there's a, there's some, um, and I think that's what I love about when I coach, there's nuances that make such a big difference. And I, I tune into those and, and I had to tune in to myself. Um, so to answer that question, I think the best thing you could do is it's, it's sometimes not the visualizing itself. It's what's the feeling nature going on? Because when I did the conversation with my hairdresser and I started pretending that conversation, there was a funness, there was a joyness, there was a delight at getting to share the good news of how of it gone and healed. Um, that I wasn't hitting on all those years before and trying to heal it. (laughs) You know, that is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant what you just said. And I think it's something that we don't go far enough. And I can see where you as a life coach can be so instrumental saying you need to go a step beyond. Keep going up, keep going up. And that's something that is real hard for us to be doing it ourselves that we miss. And it does take for years to get to the place where you discovered that. And that's what makes coaching with you so important that you can help them. And thanks for that. Because I'm just going to share a quick story with a client. She was trying to increase uh, sales in her business. And she was visualized, like she was very well versed in law of attraction and visualizing. And she was visualizing, uh, seeing herself interacting with potential clients, right? They were finding her work. They were finding like a flyer or that kind of thing she was putting together. And I said, 
I said, you're not going far enough. You, you don't need, you don't want them to find you and you want, you want to move to the place where you already have the clients. So, so you're, you're not going far enough into the experience. So, so surpass where your flyer has reached people to you've now got those six new clients and talk about, get into a conversation with one of those clients and how they're loving your work and they're so appreciative and they're so glad they found you and they're so excited, you know, and they're, and they're sharing, they're telling their friends about you. <laughs> right. So they, you know, so I said, you got to get over there. Right. But that, that, that was a very aha moment for her to like, Oh, I'm, I really am not going far the, enough. Yeah. 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 I'm not going far enough and I'm stopping just at the point where I should be growing, but I can't grow beyond it because she couldn't see the end result. So she was right. focused in on so much with doing a brochure as opposed to the end result. So it's like the golf, uh, golf um, swing. You're supposed to focus on where the ball lands, not the actual swing. Right. The whole follow through. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the law of attraction is. That's the manifesting part. And that golf swing is you are communicating with God, source, exactly what you would like to see happen. But we sure. don't go that far. We always is, stop ourselves. Well, and the thing is, we are God's source. We are the thing itself. There's no, there's no separate anything. And so as divine consciousness if what i'm holding in my consciousness is me wanting something then the only thing that is allowed to happen is conditions of me wanting something yeah <laughs> because i am the thing itself there's not there's not another god consciousness out there there's this is it it's being you it's being me it's being anybody who's hearing this it's we are the thing itself yeah. so if I bring my consciousness over there, then that's a whole different vibration. It's a whole different frequency held in that same one consciousness that is everything all the time. And now that's what can happen. But if I don't go there, then different versions of where I'm at, that's what happens. Wow. So do you do this on a daily basis? Do I do what? the meditation or the getting quiet going within and do you visualize the outcome that you would like to see uh, multiple times a day wow <laughs> so i have a daily practice at least twice a day sometimes three of just getting into silence now uh in the mornings i try to do longer periods and, and longer could mean 20 minutes or 15 minutes uh if i had on a good day i can do longer but also through my day, and it's a good tip. It's like, well, why wait till you're drained to recharge, right? Just build in just two minutes or a minute or three minute um, into your day where you just shut off, go within. Because the moment you do that, your energy, there's a natural, you're not having to create your divine place. Right. It's, it's there. I talk about it in my book as a garden hose with a kink, right? And, and God's kind of like, we're conversation about me and my passion for gardening. And he's like, you know, when there's a kink in the hose, the water hasn't stopped. It's just, it's right there at the kink. And all that's happening though, is you're no longer allowing it to flow. Oh but, it, but it's not like you have to create divine flow. It's there. It's, it's really, are we allowing it or not? And often, because of our day, we're so narrow focused in the conditions or the things or the emails or the whatevers, we don't unkink the hose often enough throughout the day. And so by the end of the day, you feel cr like crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're wiped out, you're tired. And so from just an energy uh, maintenance, right, it's like, well, if you build in like just two minutes, I mean, it doesn't have to take. 20 minutes because I don't have 20 minutes to do multiple times a day, but I do build in a two minute. I use an app called insight timer and it, it, it kind of tracks meditation and it has you know, like bell prayer bells and things or bowls and stuff like that chimes. And so I have all these different intervals and I have a five minute one I set 
And so sometimes when I'm, I'll just like, all right, I can feel it. I, I can still, I'm starting to strain or stress or my energy starting to drop. And I'll just, as quick as I can, I'll, I'll do a two minute or a five minute. And then I recharge and I like, let's go some more. Mm -hmm. um, and even if I'm in a workshop, because I do deliver workshops. And so it's harder to like, you know, you're on. But I'll make sure when we're on a break, I'm going to the bathroom and I'm going to lock myself in a stall. And I don't care if I need to pee or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting away from people. I'm shutting things off. I'm going within and I'm going to recharge for just a minute or two. And then I'm going to go back out and I'm going to be on again for the group, right? Um, so even sometimes when your work world is very demanding of you externally, you know, I'm not a smoker, but take the smoke break. <laughs> you know, go, go take the bathroom break. Go, go lock yourself in a stall. Give yourself two minutes and go back out. Right. You know, your analogy with the garden hose is brilliant. And it has me picturing that I've got two hoses in my yard and they each have kinks in it. And I'm thinking, go buy a new hose. You know, what am I waiting for? And this is perfect. That just gave me the signal. Why are you putting up with these kink hoses? We don't have to. The flow will go. That was a direct message to me. So I can't thank you enough for bringing that up. That just gave me a powerful aha moment. And, and it's going to happen. I mean, it's, you know, I don't care how long you've been doing meditation and stuff. You know, life's going to, you, you're going to go out there and live. You're supposed to. That's the idea. Yeah, we're human. <laughs> you know, and that's where, that's where your new desires are going to come from, through your interactions and stuff. Um, and so it's natural to get kind of very focused. And we were trained to get very focused on our external world. Yeah. So it requires a new practice. It requires a new discipline to how do I get non-focused, if you will? How do I come back to just being this divine consciousness I am and, and get my narrow focus and bring it back? Um, and and I, you know, I have some folks who are very physical active and sitting is hard for them. But like when they run, there's a way they can kind of do that. Oh, and yeah. I, I like to swim. And so I haven't in a while, but I used to. And, and even when I would swim, there's a way I could kind of get into this space, you know. So sometimes it doesn't mean you have to s sit your butt still, but there's still a way you're bringing your focus away from that to in. Yeah. I do find as long as I'm still physically engaged, there's still a level of my attention that has to stay out yeah. and aware. Um, so I do still think ultimately silence and learning how to do that is, is your best win. But I know that's harder for some people who are more physically wired. Yeah. Um, but even for them, there's ways they can, you know, get into that space. And there is. And would you please pick up your book and show everybody the picture of your book? Sure. It's uh, Manifest a Better Life with God. The subtitle is Use Your Inherent God Nature, which includes Law of Attraction. So because it, it's, it's really, it, and I wrote it as a story. You enter into prayer time with God and I. Chapter one is why the heck isn't it working? You know, and, and after someone who's been self-taught for years, it was like, look, I do all this crap and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we get into the story. So it's written as a story and it's a dialogue. And I, I thought that would be, uh, that kind of just kind of came as I was writing it, but it's, it's easier to read a story than like, you know, here's information. Kind of yeah, thing. we can identify with it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we do the, we all do what you described in the book. Um, and that's where we have to identify. And the only way we can identify is having tremendous people like you on the show that we can get the word out. Hey, we're not crazy. We just stop at a point and we don't go beyond because we really don't know how to. And that's what your book shows us. Hey, let's do it easily without trying hard, just using everyday logic. And I think that is the ticket for everyone listening today. It was for me. I'm, I'm just tickled pink about this whole <laughs> entire interview. It's very good. You are brilliant. I can't thank you enough for coming on. I hope you'll come back on again because okay. 
I, I, I love talking about this. I, I, it's fun for me. So anytime I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So. That's, and I want to make sure everybody knows your website, which is create with consciousness dot com and there we can go we can actually purchase the book there right but we can it's gonna it's gonna take you to amazon so oh. it's on i'm self-published on amazon um i do have a little bit of information about the book but i also have information about my coaching my energy work and yeah because uh, i i i, I kind of offer packages of of sessions and how many you want kind of thing and it kind of depends some people are new um so a, a bigger package makes sense some people are like the woman I was talking about earlier with the sales, she's a little bit more experienced. So we just do as needed, right? So as she, as she feels like she needs a little something, she calls me up. <laughs> you know, and that's the best way to do it too. That, that really, it's just not one set thing for everybody. It goes on what you need and what you think yeah. is going to be. People have to relate to you and you're easy to relate to. Well, thanks. And I do a free consult because it's, it's kind of like, you know, try on your shoes before you buy them, right? So I love that. Yeah. Uh, well, some people you resonate with, some people you won't. And it's, you know, you just got to go with that and trust that. And, and that first conversation gives a better sense of, okay, so where are you? And what do you, what do you need? Um, and can I, do I feel like I could help you with it or not help you with it? Do you want to do the energy work too or not? Um, yeah, you know, one of my clients, she's just transformed in a year, and it's been phenomenal to watch her. Uh, but we do the energy work. We do both, right? So wow. we, we do a, a guided meditation on blessing her energy centers every session and go within. And then we build on the, the other stuff around manifesting. And, and you know, and, and, and to me, the, I, I guess because personally, both have been part of my journey and what's helped me more. Uh, that I tend to like doing both if, if you know if that's what the person wants so you yeah. know the the best teacher in the world is the one who kept on failing and failing and failing and finally learned how if you haven't experienced what the majority of people how can you possibly teach it so yeah. it, it's quite um, uh, wonderful for you that we can experience life through you and learn. And um, you're great. You're absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Please, everyone, go to createwithconsciousness.com. And you're going to have an ad in the uh, magazine. So yeah. when you're reading the magazine, just flip to it. You'll see it. You can go directly. has a direct link in there. You'll see and, the book. And, and, and a little glimpse of me. Yeah. <laughs> It's a cute ad. So anyway, thank you so much for being with us today. I thoroughly enjoyed this and I got so much out of it. Can I share one more thing? Sure. So every week or so I write a weekly inspirational article and I take an image from my garden and I, I cause I, it's all part of a new coffee table book that's going to combine Ooh. inspirational words with images um, and there'll be gardening tips in the, in the book. So it's going to be a coffee table book. You open it up. Here's some inspiration. If you love the visual, you're seeing the flower. Here's some gardening tips on how to grow it. Oh, um, neat. On my Facebook page, create with consciousness, uh, slash Michael LeBlanc. I do post those weekly articles. Um, or you can sign up at, on my landing page at my website and I'll email them to you. Oh, um, you, you need to put so. an article in the magazine so we can all get a gist of that. No, I can easily send you some just to give you a sample of what I do. And, Let's and do it. Let's okay. do it. Yeah, awesome. I love yeah. it. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank Thanks. you so much, Michael. I enjoyed it immensely. Thank you. Great to meet you, too. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.